Hi there, welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops. Um, today, this is gonna be a short video, but I've been wanting to show you this for a while, um, and this will pertain to the platinum plating process, um, and I will be adding it to that playlist. Um, what I'm gonna be doing today is mixing up my own potassium oxalate. Now, like I say, I've been wanting to show you this for a while, uh, but I just kind of never had the video thing ready to go at the same time I needed the, uh, the new solution. So anyway, I'm gonna do it now. Now, potassium oxalate is my preferred developer for doing the uh, platinum and palladium process as it is the preferred uh, process for many, many printers. Um, you can always use ammonium citrate, but it's very coarse and very grainy, and this is by far the best. Now, it can be pricey to buy it. You have to buy it from Bostic and Sullivan or if you can source it from some other place, but I like to mix my own. It's very inexpensive to do and uh, just need two chemicals, and that is oxalic acid and potassium carbonate. Now, uh, they're very inexpensive to buy. I get these from, uh, let's see, where did I get this? From the chemistry store online. I'll leave some links below where you can get this, uh, the raw chemistry to make this. But uh, my formula to make one liter um, takes 200 grams of potassium carbonate and 230 grams of oxalic acid. So I'm going to have to measure that out here um, before I start mixing. Now, um, the way that I like to do that is I'll measure everything into a beaker because it is a substantial amount of powder that we're going to be mixing up in each one. Now, the other thing is, is that you really want to do this in a well-ventilated area. And you also want to probably use um, goggles, um, maybe a mask if you're so inclined. I don't use a mask to do this. Um, and and um, I like to use nitro gloves as well because what happens is you mix up the potassium um, carbonate first and it goes into solution quite easy but then afterward as is all acids you have to add the oxalic acid afterward and then it starts to fizz quite a lot and you have to keep it very active in stirring it to keep it from fizzing it, uh, up too much. You'll see that as we get going here. But um, like I say, is that you're spreading potassium oxalate around a little bit and you know, when it's fizzing around and you're stirring it, you get it on your hands. And some people's skin can be more, um, more uh, sensitive than others. And it's just not good to put the potassium oxalate on your bare skin anyway. So I use nitro gloves and uh, I'll be gloving up here in a minute and I'll take you over to the sink and we'll start doing this. But first I'm gonna measure out the, um, the chemistry. Uh, as I said, I'm going to be using 200 grams of the potassium, uh, of the, um, the, uh, the potassium carbonate, and I'm going to be using 230 grams of the oxalic acid. So I'm going to need my scale here, and I am also going to get some eye covering and some gloves. So when I come back with you, uh, we'll be uh, starting to mix this all, I mean, we'll be starting to weigh this all out, okay? So stick with me. So I've got my scale out here, and I'll get it turned on. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is setting the, uh, the tear after I put the beaker on so that I'll zero everything out and I'll know that I'm just mi mixing out the, uh, the correct amount of powder. So let's see here. I've got it at zero grams. We'll put the beaker on there. That puts me up to 193. And I'm going to zero that out. So now as I add things, it will just add the volume of the powder that I'm putting in. So let's see, we'll start off first with the potassium carbonate. Now the potassium carbonate is like, as I say, it goes into solution very easily. So let me measure out 200 grams right now. So there's 104 grams. 182, gonna have to drop a little bit of that back out. There, 200 grams. So I'll put the lid back on this, put it off to the side here. And now what I'm gonna do is take another beaker And I'm going to set the tear on that one back to zero. Now we're going to take our oxalic acid. Now, I'll, as I said, I'll leave some links on where you can buy these, this, sorry, 
we'll, where you can buy some of this chemistry on your own. Um, I like to use the chemistry sword, but also now increasingly it's easy to get these things on Amazon. So uh, that's most likely where I'll be sending you. Anyway, so here we're going to go 230 grams of the oxalic acid. Now the oxalic is a little less dense, so it's going to look like a lot more volume than the uh, potassium carbonate. So there we are at 110. There we are, we're at 212, 224, and there we are, 230 grams. So, I'm gonna put this back in here, put that off to the side, and now we have our oxalic acid, we have our potassium carbonate. Now, what we're gonna need is a thousand milliliters of, um, of water. We're going to use uh, just water out of my tap here. Um, if you live in an area where you've got very alkaline water or not very good water, I would probably use distilled water for this. But in my case here on well water up in the great north woods, we, uh, we have pretty good water here. So I just pour it out of the tap to use this. So I'll take you over to the sink. So here we are. I'm going to put my, uh, my oxalic here off to the side and I've got my potassium carbonate here as well. Now I'm going to measure out a thousand milliliters of water or one liter. And that puts me right there. Now, as I said, we're going to mix, mix the potassium carbonate first. So let me get my stirring rod here and I'm going to take and we're going to add this first. I get the water agitated and going and then I just start mixing it in. Now as I said this goes into solution fairly easily. So I'm just going to get it all in there and now I'm going to keep it suspended as I'm stirring it up in here. Now, pretty much all of it has gone already into solution. I'm just gonna let it clear here and make sure. Now again, I've got the fan on here. It's pretty well, in, uh, pretty well um, uh, ventilated in here, but you'll notice a slight kind of soapy smell with this. A lot of potassium carbonate used in soap. Okay, we're good to go now. Now, what I'm gonna do next is bring the camera over here so you can see what happens when I start to, uh, when I start to add the oxalic acid. Now again, you always wanna add an acid to your base. You never wanna go the other way around. And as I say, the, the, um, the, the ac action of this is gonna be a fairly violent response when you put this in here. So that's why I'm using the gloves and long sleeve shirt and that kind of thing. And once I'm done, I'm gonna wash up my hands uh, real well afterward anyway. And I'll be ready to go and ready to print very soon. Okay, so we've got that ready to go. It also, uh, the chemical reaction, you start off with very cold water because the chemical reaction will also warm the water up. So now we're going to go with the, uh, the oxalic acid here. Now, you're going to hear it go fizz up when I put the first bit in. Hear that? A little bit more. Now again, when I'm working with this, I want to keep the water active and I want to keep stirring as I'm dissolving it in because that will help um, help dissipate it and it won't fizz up so much. If I was just to dump this in there, it would start erupting over the top. So here we go, a little bit more. And again, I'm not, I'm keeping my face away from it just so if anything fizzes up, it's not going into my face or into my eyes, but 
Again, that's why I'm wearing the eye covering. Now I'm going to bring the, uh, I'll just grab the camera here and bring it over so you can see what's happening when I drop this in there. It's like Elka salt, sir, if you remember what that was. Drop a little bit in there, see it fizz up. And by stirring rapidly, I can help bring that fizzing down. So, here we go. Camera back set up. Now as you can see, I've only mixed about half of my oxalic acid in there. So, it takes a little bit of a process mixing the oxalic acid in. Now you can see by my activity here, I'm just keeping it from fizzing over. I'm going to let it settle down a little bit, be, a little bit before I mix any more in. I'm getting there. Almost done. Now what I'll do is once I've got this all dissolved, I will put it into my, my developer bottle here and, uh, and then I'll actually make a print and I'll show you how the new, how the new developer works. There we go. It's all in there. As you can see, it's still quite fizzy in there, but as it dissolves, that will go away. Now, the other thing is, is that when this is done, you're going to want your pH to be right around 6, 6.5. And I will also show you that. We'll test it with a, a test strip. There we go. Most of our uh, powder is now into solution. It's going to remain, it'll stay fizzing for a little while. I can still feel a little bit of powder down in the bottom and I'll keep breaking that up as I go. Now sometimes you'll, um, in your own situation, you'll get to the point where you can't quite get all of the oxalic acid to go into solution. And that's not a problem. Um, what you do is just kind of decant it off when you're, when you're um, pouring it off and make sure that you don't get any powder into, the, uh, into your developer bottle. But there, that's all there is to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this settle out a little bit more and then I'm going to put it into the bottle and then we'll make a test print and uh, I'll show you that test print as well, okay? So stick with me. So here we go. We got our funnel and it's time to pour it off into the developer bottle. Got my full liter in there. I've got a little bit of left off in here that I will uh, pour off into another bottle. But we're ready to go. So I'm going to let this set off on the side here. We're going to uh, coat a piece of paper and just make a quick test print and uh, I'll be back with you and we'll develop it and show you what happens. All right. It's time to uh, coat a test strip here, and I'm going to use my equal drops of ferric oxalate. I use five drops of each, well, along with uh, the palladium. 
And let me get my brush wet here, dab it off there, and then I'm going to pour it on. And I'll just coat an area big enough to test. There we go. Got it all coated. I'll let this dry and then I'm going to put a negative together with it. We'll make an exposure in our exposure unit and then we'll test it. Okay. And we'll put that in there. And now I'll make the exposure and we'll check it out in the developer. Okay. So here we go. We've got our print there. It's been exposed and now we're going to take our developer. There, as you can see, all is working well. So there you go. You've mixed your own potassium oxalate. Uh, it's very simple. Again, potassium carbonate, oxalic acid, um, to mix one liter, you're going to want to use 200 grams of the potassium carbonate and 230 grams of the oxalic acid. You always mix the oxalic acid into the potassium carbonate after it has been dissolved. Um, and uh, you'll get a nice developer that you can use until, until you've exhausted it. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to add my new developer into the old developer um, as I go along. And I will do that. Um, I, I mix up a little bit more than the one liter. And so I put some pour off into another bottle and I'll mix that in with my previous developer of which I only had a few milliliters left of anyway. So there you have it. I hope it helps out a lot. Um, I'm going to add this into the playlist for uh, platinum and palladium, which you can see up here right now. And uh, this will about complete the circle of all the platinum and palladium uh, instruction that I've been giving you, um, at least all of the formulas and things. So. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks a lot. Till the next time, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.